What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. This is the teardown of the RX Sapphire 7600 Pulse. Now if you missed or want to see my full review of this card, please check the description. I've already done the teardown, which I will show you in a minute. After that, I'll go over all the temperature testing that I redid. This is to show how good the stock thermal paste and stock thermal pads are. After that, I'll go over the overclocking and undervolting results that I've got here. Okay, here's the tear now. Okay, so we're going to start off by what looks to be I'm going to have to take off the back plate first. So there should be six screws here. Or oh, there are six screws on the back here. They're all spring retention screws. Does that actually get the back plate off? Oh, okay, so it's the back plate coming off from the shroud. So. Is that gonna come nicely or? A few moments later. There we go. A little bit of brute force. So that took off the front shroud. So there's the heat sink. That is very small. So there's two heat pipes. Uh, I guess it's, we'll just flip this over. No. Okay, yeah, so to take off the back plate, we will need to take off the heat sink first. So there's four really tiny screws here Should let me take this off. Of course, there's the heat, the thermal paste and pads still on there, so it's not going to just fall off. It's going to take some pressure. There we go. Okay. Let's move that aside for now and take a look at the heat sink. Oh wow, this stuff's hard. That's interesting to the point that it's brand new. I suppose it could be the type of paste, but that was very thick stuff. Okay, so let's just get the weight of this thing first. Okay. Hundred and forty eight hundred and sorry, hundred and eighty four hundred and eighty five grams. So not very heavy. 
and that's even with the thermal pad on there, but that's not enough to really care. Like that's like chalk. Wow. I guess it could just be the type of thermal paste. Um, okay. So got, is this a steel plate? No, that is an aluminum plate. That is good to see. So nothing steel, which is good. There are just the two heat pipes. One very short heat pipe and then one quite long heat pipe. I'm pretty sure there's six mils, but let's just confirm that. So 5.9. Five point nine. So yeah, six mil heat pipes. The density of the fins is fairly okay. Size of plate doesn't look too bad. I think this is actually a vapor chamber, not just a slug. So there should actually be some sort of thickness to this or void inside might be the better way of phrasing that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty simple, pretty small. So you can see you're getting a fair enough amount of pressure for the VRMs. Uh, the memory... It, like the, the pads are covering the memory perfectly fine. So what I'm uh, thinking is happening is that there's no pads on the rear. So so there's one, two, and three screws holding on the back plate here, no, four, there's another one down there. Yeah, so there's nothing on the back whatsoever. Uh, they even have the plastic cover here to then make sure nothing shorts but that also is likely acting as a bit of an insulator for any of the heat coming off the back. Yeah, so one mil thermal pads. And those are half mils, okay. And the VRM thermal pads. Are one and a half mil. Okay, so now taking a look at the shroud. It is plastic. Uh, yeah, uh, they got little foam pads here so that when it sits on the heat sink that it should cut down on the vibrations. So they are... Well, okay, these are gonna be kind of difficult to get out because they're on an angle. Maybe get in might be the more so of the issue. Or is it just the one? It's just the one screw. No. Oh, it's just the one screw. Yep. So you one screw, lift up, and then you should just be able to kind of yank it out. You need a little bit more. Yeah. So there's two little nibs that the thing sits into to 
support itself or to support the fan. Now, well, they got these in tight. A few moments later. Very, very tight. So if you're wanting, if you're needing to replace these down the road, man, good luck with that. There we go. Okay, so let's. Can I take this foam thing off without destroying? There we go. Okay, so it's a DC brushless fan, model number CF9010H. 1 2 D. It is a 12 volt 0.35 amp made in China. Uh, I guess it's a HTK Limited. Okay, so I already took a photo of this, so hopefully this should be better quality than last. So, yep, for Memory modules, obviously then two gigs a piece. We have the VRM set with the caps. I'm not gonna get too much into this because I don't know that much about this stuff. And that was the teardown, I guess. Hopefully it turned out well, I did it two days ago. Now all in all, the build quality was satisfactory and pretty much what I expected for a 250 270 usd card it's pretty much just the bare minimum okay now for the testing which took longer than i expected but i guess that's normal i'll start with the temperature charts i ran the test with the fans at 40 dba which had them at 2900 rpm after the teardown the edge and hotspot temperatures went up so the thermal paste that sapphire is using or used is good or at least as good as the mx5 that i replaced it with the memory temperature did drop slightly, so certainly not enough to recommend actually opening up the card and replacing the pads. So yeah, based off my results, there's really no point to remove the heatsink to replace anything, assuming that your temperatures are pretty much matching what I'm showing here. Moving on to the overclocking and undervolting. For the overclock, I was only able to get a plus 95 to the core, a plus 100 to the memory, and that was with a 12% boost to power. For the undervolt, I could only get a minus 50 millivolt. Anything under that would become unstable. And in addition to the overclock and undervolt, I did an optimal setting, or at least what I think an optimal setting for this card is. So that's a minus 50 millivolt to the voltage, a plus 100 to the memory, and a minus 6% to power. Looking at the temperature chart first, the overclock is the hottest with the other three having very similar edge and memory temperatures. The undervolt and underpowered, so my optimal settings, did have a slightly lower hotspot, so yeah. Looking at the frequencies, just so everyone understands, the frequency will boost as much as it can based on thermals and power. It is a bit more complicated than that, but if the temperatures go up, the frequency starts going down, is really the basis of it. In my original temperature testing, the average GPU clock was 2567. Then after the teardown, the average GPU clock was at 2555. So not too much of a difference there. With the overclock, the card's average clock went up to 2625. With the undervolt, the card's average clock was at 2635. Then with my optimal settings, the average clock was at 2575. So really not too much of a difference between any of these. Taking a look at the TGP now, again this is graphics power not total board power. The undervolt, the original test, and the post teardown test all have very similar power usages as to be expected on how the card works. So for the overclock the power usage went up to 161 watts while my optimal settings had the power usage at 135 watts. So one might think you'd have a pretty decent performance boost with that 26 watt increase in power, right? Yeah, not so much. At least in my limited testing anyway, 
there's really no difference. There's about a two to three percent difference between the 160 watts and 135 watts. So yes, meaning this card has little to no overclocking headroom. Now there is a reasonable power savings to be had. Now reasonable might be a bit of a stretch, but I'll use it anyways. So yeah, um, there's no real reason to overclock this thing. You could undervolt it and underpower it and you get pretty much the exact same performance. If anything, you get slightly better performance in the small amount of games I tested. I did also take a look at Rainbow Six Siege uh, and yeah, you're, you're getting like a three to four percent increase. No, it wasn't even that. It was like a three to four percent or three to four FPS increase. So yeah, like two percent, one percent. Like Maybe I'm more than just disappointed at this point in time. The card isn't bad, it's just not good. Like, it, it, it's an RX 6650 XT, which we've had for a year. Like, I just don't get why AMD released this card like this. I'm just really, really confused here. Well, I guess that's all I got for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to view all of my charts. There is Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. There is, again, a link in the description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.